Nikolais, I'm Andrew, and today I have an opportunity to ask questions to the owner of this example of stunning luxury and performance BMW 4 Series 3.0 engine convertible. Hi, Nia. Hi. Uh, so uh, I would ask you uh, what, uh, 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 what has inspired you to buy this uh, model over others? Yeah, of course. I think uh, ever since I was a young child, I always wanted to own a convertible. I think, you know, as a kid, when you see cars putting their roof down, it's quite a cool thing. It's quite a novel thing to see. And the BMW 4 Series in particular is one of the only models of convertible that has a hard top roof, um, which I love because one, it's practical. You know, the felt roofs can, can disintegrate and can leak quite, quite a lot. And two, when the roof's up, it looks exactly like the 4 Series Coupe and it's hard to differentiate and tell that it's a convertible until the roof is down. Um, so I think that's that's probably one of the biggest things as to why I chose this particular model. Um, I like a bit of power, so that's why I went for the 435i because it comes with the 3 liter engine. Um, so you get a bit of power and obviously when you've got the roof down in the summer, the car tends to feel more powerful when you've got the wind racing through your hair. Yeah, I think it's interesting feeling. And uh, maybe uh, can you share the process of purchasing, maybe some specifics, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I use the website Auto Trader to find the car, which is basically a marketplace for adverts for people or companies to sell to sell vehicles, dealerships or individuals. Uh, I saw the car on there. It was quite a straightforward purchasing process. I made contact with the seller. I arranged to view the car a couple of days later in the city of London. Um, I took the car for a test drive. I negotiated on price and the guy accepted my offer the same day and kindly also dropped the vehicle to my own house two days later. Mm -hmm. So it was a very smooth purchasing process. He was a very professional seller. He had documentation and he provided me all the paperwork from ever since he first bought the car in 2014 from BMW. Uh, and now let's talk about the practical and daily usage. Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, how do you find this car in a daily use? Um, is it comfortable for you and so on? Uh, what what your thoughts about that? Yeah, so this, this car is my daily. It's my only car. Um, I don't do too many miles in the car, so I only tend to use the car to drive to the train station to then commute to work. Um, in terms of practicality, I mean, you know, I'm a young man with no kids, so anything is practical. Um, it's not the most practical a car for, you know, for adults. There's not a lot of leg room or headroom in the back of the car. Um, so it's more of a kind of, I'd say, either a youngster's car or maybe a, a, a retiree who's having a bit of a late life crisis. So, Niam, how would you describe the driving experience, uh, especially uh, with uh, 3.0 petrol engine? Yeah, I'd say it's, it's quite a uh, quite a sported drive, as uh, any BMW is really, um, mainly because of the rear wheel drive. Um, you know, you can really feel the power being delivered to the car from behind, uh, especially when you're cornering and uh, driving along country roads. Um, three litre engine is quite punchy. Uh, it's quite responsive. Um, I haven't I haven't really pushed it to its limits yet, um, but there's more than enough power to, to keep you satisfied. To be honest, for especially for UK driving. Okay, and uh, what about you know uh, if if you are talking about city drive and uh, road trips? Yeah. So uh, is it comfortable to you to drive in the city mode, uh, especially with such powerful engine when you want to uh, put the gas on? Yeah, yeah. I think I think in the city it's, it's quite yeah it's quite tricky to um, to put your foot down and use the power. You kind of have to save that for for country roads, um, just generally because there's too much traffic to really kind of enjoy yourself. Um, in terms of in terms of long journeys, so I've taken it since I've owned the car. I've taken it to Wales once, and I've also taken it down to Southampton. Um, so those are quite long journeys. Uh, it, it's fairly comfortable. I find it fairly comfortable. Um, I think if you're coming from a car which is not a sports car you might find it a bit of a shock as um, these cars tend to have sports suspension so it's quite a firm ride mm -hmm. and you tend to feel every single uh, bump and pothole in the road um, I think I've grown quite used to that so I don't really notice but if you bring someone else into the car who's maybe used to a more comfortable drive like a Mercedes they probably will find it a little bit uncomfortable uh, at first to be honest Yes, and now we are driving and I feel that it is not too firm and uh, I would say a, maybe soft, something medium. What uh, your thoughts about that? Yeah, I think, I think that's a fair comment. So th this particular model, although having the M Sport suspension package, is also fitted with the optional extra adaptive suspension pack, uh, which basically means the suspension adapts to the road surface, uh, whether that's the gradient or the, the type of road surface, which kind of helps uh, the journey be a bit more smoother. 
but I think overall it's still a bit more rough and ready than let's say um, you know a luxury coupe like a, like a Mercedes C-Class for instance which has got a much much smoother ride I think uh, <clears throat> not only the suspension but the gearbox as well the gear changes in these BMWs tend to be quite harsh and they tend to give you that kind of sporty feel when you change gear and put your foot down they really kind of push you back into the seat um, uh, for example, if you are going to a uh, long uh, trip, yeah, uh, I mean more than maybe five uh, hours, mm. and you are driving uh, the trip, uh, have you got tired? Uh, I mean, maybe your back or neck or something like that. How do you feel comfortable in sitting in such uh, seats? So I think I think yeah, the, the, you know, the leg room is not too bad for me personally, but you know, I'm I'm only five foot five, so you know, any any amount of leg room is a bonus for me. I think generally for long journeys uh, with this with this particular model, as it's only a two door uh, convertible, the leg room in the back of the car isn't the greatest. Um, which means you know if you're travelling with adults in the back of the car, they're probably not going to find it very comfortable if you're driving for more than more than an hour. Um, I think generally the leg room at the back and also the head room would would be a struggle for slightly taller adults. Um, if you had two children, perhaps they'd probably be fine with the amount of space in the back of the car. Um, so overall, I think I think it's a good car for long journeys if you want to drive on scenic roads like in Wales. But it's probably better if it's just you going or you and your partner not bringing a whole family because it's not the most practical when it comes to long journeys. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, my next question uh, is: um, Can you give us insights uh, about uh, into the running cost of uh, fuel efficiency mm -hmm. and oil? Also, uh, what can you say about it? Yeah, so at the moment I'm averaging around 23 miles per gallon, uh, which isn't, isn't the best MPG out there. But I think, you know, you've got to remember it's, it's a three litre performance car. I don't tend to do a lot of motorway miles. So my driving tends to be limited to either town or taking the car out for a nice spin in the good weather on, on country lanes on the weekend. So I'd probably say my right foot's quite heavy. And uh, I think, you know, a more sensible owner could probably get a better MPG out of the car. Um, in terms of oil, so these BMWs work based on condition-based servicing, which means the, the iDrive, which is BMW's infotainment system, will ping up and tell you when the oil level is running low. Um, and on the iDrive, there's also a feature where you can also get the car to check the current oil level. And I'd probably say I tend to do that every two to three months, unless the car prompts me that it needs more oil. Were there um, any times that um, this infotainment system was uh, rem reminding you that uh, you should uh that your oil level is low and you should uh, make it um, top it up top it up yeah yeah it. i think you know i've had the car for about 18 months and i think from memory it's only popped up once to tell me you know you need to top up top up your oil because it's at the minimum engine level uh, other than that because i don't travel too much i don't do too many miles i don't think the car burns through too much oil generally no uh, okay uh, and um I don't know, uh, when, maybe if you do that, uh, when do you change uh, last time your braking pads, if it was? <laughs> yeah, so, so actually I was a bit lucky because the previous owner of the car had just changed all four brake pads and discs just before I'd bought the car. Um, and as, as I'm sure you're aware, discs, discs tend to be quite expensive. Pads aren't too bad. I think pads you're looking around £400, £500 to replace all four with BMW and discs, well discs could take you over a thousand pounds in total. So I luckily have not needed to change the pads or the discs since I bought the car. And again, as I mentioned before, I haven't been driving it too much. So the pads and discs are still in fairly tip top condition, which is good. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, I should ask, uh, but um, probably it's not a point. So any maybe great repayments or something like that uh, have been made to this car by you or something like that? Or, or the previous owner? Yeah, so, so in terms of modification, so when I bought the car actually, it was just a, just a standard red 4 Series 435i. Um, I decided to uh, give it a bit of a gloss black look because I thought the gloss black goes quite well with the red. It's a nice contrast. So I added a few bits to the car, uh, including a spoiler, rear diffuser, some gloss black side skirts and uh, a front splitter, as well as gloss black wing mirror housings. And I think that gives the car a nice kind of, you know, contrast between the black and the red. And especially when the sun is shining, it looks great in the sun. Yeah, it looks very nice and perfect. Uh, actually, I thought that you already bought with these uh, things, uh, but yeah, cool. And uh, do you remember the prices for this tuning, this, this and all these black things? Yeah, so these parts are, tend to be quite cheap as they're just kind of uh, ABS plastic from China. So for the spoiler, diffuser, 
front splitter and side skirts, I think all in all, I paid about 500 pounds and that included fitting by the workshop as well. Um, cool, cool. It's uh, reasonable actually. Yeah. I mean, the parts are quite straightforward to fit yourself, but I'm a bit nervous when it comes to that. So I thought I'd let the experts handle it. And uh, one more question that I forgot to mention. Uh, it's personally interested. It's, I'm personally interested in it. Uh, so when it is summer and you go without uh, a roof yeah. and it is sunshine, uh, does it hit in your head? Because when I see such guys driving such cars, I always thought that you can, you can um, have a, a heat stroke <laughs> what, what can you say about that i think i think to be honest like if it, if it is a hot and sunny day and you are stuck in traffic or moving quite slowly the heat can feel quite intense at times uh you know my best advice would be to to wear a cap or if you're feeling too hot you know put the roof up or you could even put the air conditioning on if you wanted with the roof down although that's a bit of a waste um but to be honest like as long as the car is moving and there's a little bit of a breeze it actually tends to keep you relatively not cool but you don't overheat i would say okay and also the question about that in that um, direction so uh if for example roof is uh, down uh do you drive with open winds or no because i know that when you drive for example let's say 40 miles uh, yeah. uh, there is windy outside yeah how, how do you feel about that? Well, I think if, if it's a hot, hot day, like very hot, then I'll have the windows down as well because then the breeze, the breeze cools me down nicely. If it's warm but not quite hot enough, then I'll have the roof down, but I'll have the windows up and that kind of keeps most of the wind out. And I, the, the other thing I like is that the car has so many different faces. It looks different when it's got the roof down and the windows down to how it looks when it's got the roof down but the windows up to then how it looks with the roof and the windows up. Uh, and uh, also, uh, what can you say about the maybe potential uh, owners of this car, maybe some proofs and cons uh, and uh, maybe some things that not everybody knows, you know? Uh, yeah, what can you say? Yeah, I mean... And maybe show, I don't know. Of course, of course. I mean, starting with pros, I think uh, realistically one of the biggest pros is that it's one of the only car companies now that makes a hard top convertible. In fact, uh, the new BMW 4 Series convertibles only come in soft top. Um, Mercedes, you know, their C-Class uh, convertibles only come in soft top. So really, I'd say it's quite a rare breed because you don't see many hard top convertibles around nowadays. And that, I think, is, is a massive pro. Um, in terms of cons, uh, one big con, actually, which I stupidly did not do enough research on before I bought the car, is um, on the convertible, 4 Series convertibles, and this includes all models of 4 Series as well as the M4, there is a design fault by BMW whereby when water is draining, if it's, if it's rained a lot, when water drains and it goes down the window seals, um, there are two drainage plugs underneath each side of the car. And these tend to get clogged up with, with silt and dirt from the road. Can you show where it happens? Yeah, so well, what happens is it kind of the water will run down here and go down these gaps. I mean, generally, you know, leaking on a convertible is, uh -huh. is sometimes a risk. It'll go down these gaps and what should happen is that it should drain out the bottom of the car there's a small little drainage plug there now yeah. the design of the drainage plug wasn't very good by bmw it was a spiralized design which meant dirt and debris would flick up and get caught in there mm -hmm. causing it to block which meant that when you had rainfall the water had nowhere to go apart from sitting in the car okay and the problem i had is that so much water built up that when i used to brake heavily i could hear the water sloshing about and in fact, it would sometimes come out in the back of the car and hit me on the back of the shoulder oh my whilst God. I was driving. <laughs> um, so the solution, luckily, is quite a quick one. It's basically just to remove the drain plugs. Don't oh. put them in at all. Take them out. And, and, you know, any mechanic will do that for you for a low price. And you'll be surprised the amount of water that came out of my car when we drained it. It was, it was gallons of water. And unfortunately, you know, I picked up on the problem slightly too late because by that point, water had filled up in my door. Oh my and God. my window motor had gone, which was a couple of hundred pounds to replace. Oh uh, it can get worse than that. If you've got the BMW 4 Series with the optional Harman Kardon speakers, there is an amplifier in the back of the boot on this side. If the water level fills up so much, it can blow your amp and you're looking at around one to two thousand pounds for a new amplifier. Oh my God. Uh, but as I understood, you already did this. Yeah, you removed this. Yeah, so things. unfortunately, yeah, after a little bit of damage had been caused, we then, we then removed the drain plugs. And I was a bit gutted that I didn't read up about that before because it is actually a very common issue with the 4 Series convertibles. And, you know, I was a little bit naive not, not to have a look at that before. But touch wood, luckily, not too much long-term damage was caused. Okay, cool. I think uh, it would be a valuable experience. Yeah.
And now I wanted to show you uh, the boot space because it's organized not uh, as a regular car and actually it was a surprise for me to see what is inside. So Mian, please, can you show what is inside? Of course. Yeah. So this is the boot. First thing to note is that the boot lid on these convertibles are really, really heavy, surprisingly heavy. Uh, as you can see, the space is quite restricted with the convertible models because you have all these, these braces that run along both sides and all the infrastructure in place to obviously allow the roof to go down. So that does take up quite a bit of room. Um, on top of that, to, <laughs> to restrict room even further, if you want to have the convertible roof down, you must always pull down this rack. This rack has to go down first. And it will not let you take the roof down until this rack is down. And obviously this restricts your boot space even further. Um, so you can still fit a couple of small bags in there underneath, but as you can see, you are quite heavily restricted on boot space if you do want to have the roof down. Yeah, so in terms of the rest of the boot, so if you lift up the, the bottom carpet off, off the boot, you have your fuse box there at the back. Uh, interesting story actually uh, with the fuse box. So um, you may be familiar already, but the BMW models that come with twin exhausts, so the, the 430s, the 435s, the 330s, the 340s, what happens is that one exhaust is permanently open and the other exhaust has a butterfly valve inside which only opens either at high speeds over 3000 revs or in sport mode um, which obviously makes the exhaust louder because both valves on both sides are now open so what i did is, is i actually pulled the fuse out which controls the butterfly valve in the second exhaust which means valves on both sides are permanently open means the car permanently sounds good Yes, that's also a good point because for me, um, I always pay attention when you know the car has uh, two of these uh, um, exhausts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and they, they should both be with smoke. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yes, yeah, definitely. It's, I think cool. it looks better. And also, to be honest, it's a modification that makes the car sound slightly better and it costs you nothing because all you have to do is take out one fuse. And now we show you how the roofs come down. Oh my God, that's very interesting. I'm first time seeing. Let's take a walk around this beauty. Know all the slick lines, the signature BMW kidney grill, and those aggressive M Sport bumpers, <laughs> the alloy wheels, they aren't just for show, they're a statement. And this color red, isn't, isn't it just a breathtaking? And underneath this slick exterior lies the heart of the beast, a 3.0 liter petrol engine. It's not just any engine, it's a power plant that offers exhilarating performance while still being surprisingly efficient. Okay, and probably the last question from uh, my side uh, is, uh, looking back, uh, would you make uh, the same purchase decision today? Yeah, I think definitely. You know, if I was, if I was looking at this car today, 100% I'd bite the hand off and, and still buy it. It's a great car. I think the biggest bit of advice I'd give to anyone who's buying a 4 Series convertible is please, please, please do check, has the car had the drainage modification done? Um, if the seller of the car doesn't know what that means, there's a good chance that it hasn't. Um, because that could cause, well, nasty repair bills in the future. Okay, Nian, thank you for sharing your experience with that car. Thank you for uh, agreeing to participate in my review. And uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Please put likes, uh, your comments, uh, subscribe, and maybe you want to ask Nian other questions. So, see you!